What's an ion? That's what today's video is all about. We're going to be talking about ions, how ions are created, uh, why they're created, and we'll be able to look at the periodic table and determine um, the charge of an ion. So let's talk about what it is first. So first off, an ion is going to be any atom that has lost or gained an electron. Might not just be one electron, it could be multiple electrons. The reason comes from, it all comes down to stability. Many times neutral atoms are unstable. Um, the way they become stable is they need to achieve an electron configuration of a noble gas. And we remember those noble gases were those gases that we're going to call them 8A all the way to the right of the periodic table. So we're going to give you an example here of um, how an atom forms an ion and what it really does to um, the charge of that atom. So we'll use the example of sodium. So sodium, um, when it's in its neutral state, has an atomic number of 11. So that tells us that it has um, the number of protons is 11 and the number of electrons is 11. And if we do the electron configuration, which we've already talked about how you do that, we can do 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s1 as its electron configuration. Um, it turns out this is uh, slightly unstable. And sodium in this form is actually very unstable. And so what will happen is sodium will actually give away or lose one electron. Now once it does that, it then has the electron configuration of a noble gas. Now it does not become that noble gas, it just has an electron configuration of that noble gas. That noble gas being um, 2, 4, 6, 10, atomic number 10, which would be neon. That allows it to be a little bit more stable, actually much more stable. So um, when sodium does lose an electron, and it usually loses an electron to another um, atom, um, what we can do is then we're going to count the number of electrons it has. So now it is going to have 10, oops, let's, make that a, let's erase that and make that a 10. It's going to have 10 electrons. Do a little bit math here, and if we look back up here at the um, atomic number of sodium, we know that it's still going to have 11 protons, positively charged particles, because as long as it has 11 protons, it's still sodium. It can have a different number of electrons. And if we add those two up, we have, with 10 negative particles to 11 positive particles, we know that we have a 1 plus charge being formed here. Okay, and that, that is what happens to sodium. This is going to be its charge. And so the way we write this now is we, we denote sodium as um, having um, the symbol Na and a 1 plus charge. That is um, the uh, charge of sodium when it forms an ion. Let's talk about... Um, how we name this. Now, whenever we have positively charged ions, such as sodium, and, and all metals form these positive charged ions, and we'll write that down. Metals form positive ions, and we call these positive ions cations, collectively cations. C-A-T-I-O-N-S, cations, all positive ions. Now, um, when we name cations in group um, 1A, in group 2A, as well as in group um, 3A, naming these cations, we just basically call it the name of the atom, for example, sodium, and then we add the word ion at the end. So nothing special about naming them. Now, group 1A, group 2A, group 3A is going to exclude the transition metals. We're not talking about the transition metals yet. That will be a different uh, talk on a different day. So let's take a look at a periodic table now. Okay, so here's our periodic table. And, um, and, and the periodic table that you have at home um, has labels here. There's our 1A, there's our 2A, and there's our 3A. Now, what happens with these guys is everybody in this alkali metal group here, alkali metal group, is going to form the same exact charge. They all end with the same exact electron configuration, a 1s1, a 2s1, 3s1, 4s1, 5s1. So they all lose um, one electron. So they're all going to form a 1 plus charge. Everybody in the alkaline earth metal group, 2a, loses two electrons, forms a 2 plus. We're looking at here boron and aluminum. Boron and aluminum are going to form 3 plus charges. Now everybody down, remember here in our in the center of our uh, periodic table, all these guys down here are our um, 
our transition metals, we're going to deal with those guys later. And I'm going to add something else to this periodic table. We do know that we have a stair step line here that separates to the left our metals and to the right our nonmetals. Okay, so that takes us through. And then, so so if we ask a question, we can say something like this. Um, what would the charge be if each of the following formed ions? Let's say calcium, and what would the charge of potassium, and let's say what would be the charge of boron. And so if you want to pause the video now, you can actually fill these in and um, then go back and press play. Make sure you've done them right. Okay. So we're going to talk about the calcium one first. So calcium sits right here on the periodic table. There's calcium. And so we look and see, okay, the charge is going to be a 2 plus. Potassium sits right next to it right here. Everybody in the alkali metal group forms a 1 plus charge. And then boron sits right over here in column 3A. It's going to form a 3 plus charge. Now what does this actually mean? Well, it means that calcium has a loss of 2 electrons when it forms um, a 2 plus charge. Potassium has a loss of 1 electron when it forms a 1 plus charge. And boron has a loss of three electrons when it forms a one plus charge, all to get over here to our noble gas electrode configuration. Okay, and so for the most part, that's what that's what metals are going to do. Again, we'll talk about those transition metals later. But we we are missing out on our non-metals group. These are our non-metals over here. So let's pick one of these non-metals and and have a little discussion about it. Okay, we're going to pick the non-metal fluorine on the periodic table. Okay, so um, again, if we were to look at a neutral atom of fluorine, we would have we'd have nine protons, and we have nine electrons. We'd add those together, and that would be a neutral atom. We'd have electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Um, again, this is not a stable electron configuration, so we want to have an electron configuration kind of like neon. To get to neon, we have to add or gain one electron. So we're going to go ahead and gain one electron to form 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, which gives us our noble gas electron configuration for neon, even though we still are um, a fluorine atom. And then if we do our math, we now have 10 electrons. And up here tells us we still have nine protons. And if so we're going to add together uh, 10 negative charges with um, 9 positive charges, we're going to get a 1 minus charge. So the ion fluorine forms an F1 minus, just like that. And nonmetals, for the most part, form negative ions. We call these negative ions anions, collectively. Okay? And when we're naming anions or nonmetal ions, what we do is we have a different type of naming scheme. Remember the metals, we just added the word ion to the end of them. But on the nonmetals, what we have to do is we're going to drop the ending, drop the ending of the word, and then we're going to add the suffix I-D-E. So fluorine becomes fluoride with the IDE ending instead of fluorine. Okay. And so let's take a look at the periodic table again. And let's, um, let's talk about how we can predict charges based on positioning in groups. And as we spoke of before, we have a 1A, 2A. 3a just fill these back in we have a one plus we have a two plus and we have a three plus the way it works here on our non-metal group remember our non-metals are everyone that is over here to the right of that stair step line is we'll take a look at carbon first carbon does not form typically an ion so we're just going to put a zero and that just goes for carbon um, and then we get to the nitrogen group which is our group 5a these guys are going to gain electrons and they gain three electrons then we get to 6A, our oxygen group. They gain two electrons to get them to a noble gas electron configuration. 
7a gains one electron and the noble gases, of course, they don't gain or lose electrons, so they're all going to be neutral. So again, in the nonmetals, our 7A is a one minus charge, our 6A is a two minus charge, and our 5A is a three minus charge. And I highly recommend that you place these values on your own periodic table, your paper one that I provided for you. Okay, so let's give you some practice problems to work on here. So let's say, let's say um, we wanted to uh, determine Number one, um, what charge, let's say phosphorus, and number two, what charge, chlorine, and number three, what charge, um, nitrogen form when they form ions. So if you want to do this, you pause the video now and you can do this um, at home and then come back and check your answers. So, okay, well, if you pause the video and do this, hopefully for phosphorus, phosphorus sits right here on the periodic table in column 5a, and you're going to have a three minus charge forming. Um, chlorine sits in the halogen group, 7A, right here, so you're going to form a 1 minus charge. And when nitrogen forms an ion, it sits right here in the 5A group, once again forming a 3 minus charge. And what does this mean? Well, 3 minus means that phosphorus gains 3 electrons, because remember electrons are negative, and if you gain electrons, you become more negative. Um, chlorine gains 1 electron, and nitrogen gains also, like phosphorus, three electrons because they're both in the same exact group, that 5A group. If we're going to name these, remember on nonmetals we have to add the IDE ending, so we're going to call this phosphide, we're going to call this chloride, IDE ending once again, and the last one, nitride. And that's how we can tell on our um, representative elements, 1A, 2A, 3A, 5A, 6A, 7A, um, how to calculate the charge and how to name those ions, okay?